I have a lot to write. Oh. Good evening, why are both our home? Okay, uh, invite all that. Uh, today's topic very exciting. Uh, even the ones that get tired, sharp, sharp, so that I can go and relax. I traveled, I just came back from where I went to, so there's no, there's no time. All right, and uh, I also want, um, if you're alive, if you want to join, this is our program so that we can make it very exciting. Uh, uh, if you have uh, anything you want to say regarding this very topic, all right, if you want to share your thoughts about it, um, um, if you want to share your thoughts about it, uh, let me know so that you all can join. Uh, you all can join. Or any of you can join. If you have any idea that you want to share with us quickly, you can join. So while we're waiting for all this, but um, I want us to discuss uh, this topic. Um, very important topic. Very, very important topic. Uh, maybe I had time uh, when I hear when I hear some topics that bothers our people, um, I like to just quickly give. Um, uh, I just I like to quickly just give my historical perspective about it. Open open a pathway for further academic discussion. Um, yes, yes, I have seen a lot of article that have been flying around the social media that um, is the chi man is the chi man is an evil man or is the chi man is an evil man and the obviously the word is is evil the word chi man is evil um it, it is not possible some even alluded that is an Aruchuku native doctor. Okay, so that's what a lot of persons said, and um, some said a whole lot of things. But you know, as as a researcher and an historian, 
uh, I like to add my own thoughts, one penny, what I would call my one penny contribution on topics that has to concern our, our heritage. So I'm going to add my one penny contribution. And my one penny contribution is not derived, if not derived from sentiment. My one penny contribution is not derived from sentiment. I like to equip my people with the right knowledge to go forth uh, and argue. <laughs> this is as I fresh. A technical or no. Um, so I like to allow our people, I, 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 I give them the right academic tools eh, to argue. You know, because I don't, by nature, uh, I cannot argue with people. It's, it's part of what I have come to believe in life. I, I cannot argue with people. If I write and you write, and I write again and you write, I just get tired because I have a million and ten things to worry about. I have a million and ten things to worry about. But to make it exciting, you can, if you want to join, you can, you can make a request and so that you can join, so that <clears throat> all questions can be asked. You can make your opinion as short as possible so that we can, we can look and how we can connect the dots and the dots, the dots, the lines of every history. So, because there is no time, I'll keep it very short. But I want us to open our ears and focus attentively so that we can grasp this knowledge. First and foremost, is a chime or is a chima does not exist as a personage in the history of Benin. The word, the statement is a chima does not exist. It is the Igbonization. Uh, let me not say does not exist. Uh, the personage of Ezejima does not exist. That's not the right English. The word Ezejima, rather, does not exist in the documented history of the Edo people. But the personage at which it has been referred to as Ezechima exists in the, in the atlas of Benin history or Benin historiography. The personage exists, but the word does not exist. So, who is is now the Ezechima. We must go back to the beginning of the history in order to ascertain the true contest at which these arguments are being labor or presented the history that has been in circulation for these years 
has punctuated that as a chairman was a personage that became primus or attained uh, uh, um, limelight during the reign of Obaisigi. Now, when there are conflicting history between two sets of people, what you must look at for are facts, generational history, the patterns of how this personage existed. Did this personage fell from the sky? Who was his father? Who was his mother? Who was his mother? Where is he from? At what reign? At what time of history did this person became known? What the Igbos are presented is what I would call a waterside history that does not have any historical bearing. It does not, you do not need an intelligent man to be able to discredit what they are presented. First, they claim that there is a chi man was an Arochuku native daughter. They never told you where exactly is it from. In Arochuku. Secondly, who was Eze Chima's father? They never spoke about it. Who was Eze Chima's mother? When this Eze Chima, who is an Arochuku native daughter, when he got to Benin, who was the Reni Obar of Benin at that time? They never spoke about it. Then, what evidence can they not bring to the table that will make me believe that he was an evil man. After all, I can sit in the confinement of my of my study room and begin to allot names, time that even the Uri, Abinri, Eri came from Benin in the year uh, uh, 500 BC without giving sequential history. Without giving sequential history. So, but this is it. Let us look at the Benin perspective. The Benin perspective, and let us look at the Ise Luku perspective. Why it is very important to look at the Ise Luku perspective is that the head of the Eze Chiman clan. Eze Chima has about 10 clowns. Eze Chima have about 10 clowns. From Iseluku to Nichaolona to Nichaugbo to Obio to Ezi to Onichaomili, which is now called the Onichainanabra, etc., etc. Iseluku seems to be the head. Of all the clans of Eze Chima, we have to go deep into it and look at what they presented as a history. They, they will not corroborate it with what the earliest writers of Benin, like Jacob Wade Arewa and late, late Dr. Jacob Wade Arewa and late Dr. Aisha Nehangos are presented as history. When we corroborate this, it is very easy. Why I said it is not in doubt that Iseluku is the head of all the Eze Chima clans, the, the, 
the the nine to ten or the ten clans when you including Iseluku, they are the ten clans of the Eze Chima. Of all these ten clans, Iseluku is the head. This will corroborate by the peace treaty that was signed in 1902 with the British as regards the Ekumeku War in 1902. It will also corroborate with the 1896 treaty that all the Eze Chima's clown signed with the Royal Niger Company, which was signed by the then Obi of Iseluku. It would also that the Eze Chima stand hall was built at Iseluku. And Eze Chima's native court. Eze Chima was built in 1953, and it was cited at um, 1953. It was cited at uh, Iseluku. Then in 1912, Eze Chima's native court was also built, also cited at Is Iseluku. So it is in a common knowledge that Iseluku is the head of these Eze Chima clowns. So they are in the best position to be able to write the true history of who is a Chima was. Because chronologically, Eze Chima is the fifth Obi of Iseluku. Is the fifth Obi of Iseluku. And it was only Iseluku that he became a ruler. He never became a ruler in any of the other nine clans, including the Onisha in present-day Anabra State. All right? In present-day Anabra State, the heads could not have been obvious. What did he say? The head could not have been obvious, but I'm coming to that. I'm coming to that. The, I'm coming to that. All right? So, questions can be asked. No, 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 no. Questions can be asked. Now, it is a common saying like I've established by facts. I gave facts and I gave dates. The peace treaty signed in 1896 with Royal Niger Company was signed by the Obi official on behalf of all the Eze Chima clan. 1896. Then in 19 in 1902, the peace treaty that was signed with the British as regards the Ekumeku War was signed by the Obi of Iseluku. The Eze Chima's native court, which was established in 1912, is cited at Iseluku. And the Eze Chima Town Hall is also cited at Iseluku, which was constructed in 1953. These are facts. All right, these are facts. So let's now come home. Who is this a chima? As a chima, is a corrupted word. It is a corrupted word. The original pronunciation. A lot of people send me some article. They said he he meant. Which was mispronounced to Chime, and which was mispronounced to Chima, Ibonization of the word. But again, I ask, is it Hime? Is it Hime? A Benin word? No, it isn't. So it means that, that there would have been, Ihime is now the modern way. That Iseluku pronounces the original Benin word, which is Ihimi. Which is Ihimi. Ihimi. Over the years was most mispronounced as Ihime. From Ihime to Chime, from Chime to Chima. The, the original word for that personage was Ihimi. And he had a father, and his name was Ise. Ise was the fourth Enogie. 
officer le coup. All right. He said was he fought a no game of Iseluku. So when you look at the chronology of the Enige or, or the kings of Iseluku, he said, which is very, very important in this our, our historical narrative, all right, as we proceed, we must take, take very careful note of it. That he said, who is the fourth Enoge or the fourth Obi of Iseluku is the father of Ihimi. And Ihimi, which has over the years been mispronounced as Ihime to Chime and to Chima over the years, is important because the history ties or by why the first to Iseluku. Now, this is the story. When Prince Ogun, who was later to be denied, who was later, who was denied the throne of his father, Obaohe, started wandering in the forest. He found himself at Iseluku, in present-day Iseluku, and he was accepted fully by the then head of Iseluku, which was Enoge Ise. The name of that Obi or that Enoge at that time. All right. I also want us to take cognizance that the first five rulers of Iseluku had a title of Enoge. Are not to be. It is from the sixth, which is Prince Oribo, which is Seliku calls Oligo. Oribo. All right. Oribo is another very ancient Benin word that I will explain later. But the first five rulers of Iseluku were addressed as a no gift until the reign of Oligo. All right, going back to Enoge Ise, Enoge Ise was the then ruler of Iseluku at the time that the wandering Prince Ogun wandered to Iseluku and he was accepted by Enoge Ise, understanding of the filial ancestral connections between the Enoge of Iseluku and the royal house in Benin. Don't forget, the founder of Iseluku was Prince Wadia, who was one of the sons of Obaya Wedo. All right? So these were ancestrally royal bloods. So they accepted him and inculcated him into the ways and life at Isoluku, and he was given a title. He was made a chief. Coincidentally, I'm opening another aspect of Benin history, that the first and the only of our Benin was a chief in a faraway land, like uh, a, a, a sort of um, a, a satellite Benin town of Isoluku, who eventually became an Oba. Is Obaya Wai the first. He was made a chief in Iseluku with a title called Akoga. Prince Ogun, who later became Obaya Wai the first, was given a title of Akoga of Iseluku, a chief tenancy title. All right? Was given a chief tenancy title called Akoga in Iseluku. Get this history very clearly. Was given a chief tenancy title of Akoga in Iseluku. 
Then, don't forget the young prince Ogun and the young prince Ihimi became best of friends. They grew up together under the care of the first wife of Enogi Se. Her name was Ilogoma. She hailed from a village called Unkunzu. Unkunzu is a prominent village close to present Akumazi. When you're going towards Obuluku area. All right? Unkunzu. That is the village that the mother of Prince Ihimi came from. All right? And that village is not an Igbo white village. It belongs to the Olukumi clown. You know, the Olukumi people are from the areas of present day Laje and Okitipupa. All right? Was was from the clown was from the clown he came the unkunzu is a place that still exists till date he comes from the area the olukumin clown the olukumin people are from they migrated from the areas of um, the the larger migrated from the areas of the larger uh, the okitupupa area the watering part of the present day ondo ondo state that's where the olukumin people came from don't also forget the Olukumi people, at one point in history, had passed through the Benin land and settled at a place called Ogbelaka. That is another story for another day. So Olukumi people are, are partly Yoruba and partly Benin because they spent quite a lot, a, a number of years at the present day Ogbelaka before they went to settle in the present area now called Olukumi in present day Delta State. All right, that mother. That wife of Ise Enogi Ise, that, that, that wife of Enogi Ise, who is the mother of Prince Ihimi, who later to be called is a chiman, is a chiman by the organization of the name, took care of the young Prince Ogun and the young Prince Ihimi because they both now grow up together and don't forget this young prince ogun was already given a title called akoga of Iseluku. after so many years of intermingling prince ogun now returned back to benin and i became the Obar of benin he became the Obar of benin 15 years into his reign that would have been around 1455 or thereabout because he came to the throne around 1440. So around 1455, Enogi said, who was a man who took care of him, died. And his son, his first son, Prince Hihimi, who was later to become a Zichi man by most modern day historian all right by modern day historian prince Ihimi eventually became the enogi of iseluku so in the chronology of the rulers of iseluku he says is the fourth ruler Ihimi is the fifth ruler like I have said, Ihimi was later to be called Chima or Chime. All right? All right? <laughs> so, it's getting very interesting. So, along the line, Iseluku, because of the relationship Obaiwai had when he was still a prince with the Iseluku people, uh, and <laughs> You understand? Because of the relationship between 
<laughs> they are very funny people. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm giving facts. <laughs> That's what I give. I give facts. You give you give lies and rhetorics. I give facts. So um after my wire as I said in the troll, because of how the father of is a chairman took custody of him and took care of him. So the Isiliku people found favor in the eyes of the Benin throne. Don't, don't mind the fact, fact that they were all bad children, but they found extra favor. So along the line, Otogiri Ore went up by why the friends had passed on, all right? Then had passed on, as a chief man was still on the throne. Ozolwa came in, and at almost the same time that Ozolwa passed was when Eze Chima also passed. All right? Uh, after AY, obviously, there were two intermittent. Um, we had Ezoti and we had Olua. All right? But I'm talking about Ozolwa. After the time at Ozolwa passed on to Uri Uri, that was almost the same time Eze Chima passed on. Now, but at the time when Eze Chima was still alive, he had a son. He had two sons and one daughter. Listen very well. He had two sons and one daughter. The name of the first son was actually named, the name given to him, Ezechima's first son, was given to him by Ezechima's mother. Who had already said was a woman from Ulukumi, Unkunzu, who was a woman from Ulukumi. All right. All right. So, was a woman from Ulukumi because of the way he loved the Benin people. He gave his grandson, his first grandson, Oisa. Oisa. Which the Igbos call, which the Igbos call Chuku, which the Yoruba called Orisa. He gave the first, the name of the first son of Eze Chiman was given to him by his grandmother. And the name was called Oisa, God. No one that that the recent, the current Obi of Onicha, when he was giving an historical analysis, mistook the Bini Oisa for Orisa in Ileife. And in order not to give the superiority or the due respect that is due for the Iseluku people, in order for him not to give them the due respect, he went to give the respect rather to the Ileife people. The word on the chat truly came from a Benin word, Oisa, which we refer Eram Oisa, which refers to God Almighty. Are you getting the gist? There's a chairman has two sons and one daughter. All right, but the first son, the name was given to him, to Ezechima's first son by Ezechima's mother. That is the grandmother of this boy. And that name was Oisa, which was later day to be corrupted to Onicha. Then the second son was was, I have already said it, was Oribo, which the Iseluku today call Olibo. And the only daughter that Ezechime has is Obio. Obio. Obio today, they are like what the Ihogbe, what the Ihogbe the relative of the Obar of Benin does to the Obar of Benin is what the Obio. So every before every Seluku or all, all the all the Ezechima clowns are crowned, any of the Obis 
in each of these is a Chima's clown. Of these 10 is a Chima's clown, including Obiona are crowned. The people from Obio must be the one to do the procession right because they are the they are like that is their traditional function to date. The Obio was the only daughter, all right, though the second child of Ihimi, who was later to be called as a Chiman, was the second child but was a girl. Oligbo was the third child of as a Chiman, but was a son. Along the mind, when Ezechime was still the tr was still on the throne, his first son, Oisa, died. It was an abomination. He was later to be buried in an evil forest because truly the first son, the prince, does not die, was not meant to die before his father. So Oisa was not buried in the evil forest, all right, because it was an abomination in Iseluku for him for his son to die before the father. So, as a Chime's first son died before as a Chime himself died, and but before that first son died, he had a son. I don't want us to miss it up, it has to be very clear. It has to be very clear. I want us to pay attention. Because this knowledge is free. All right, this knowledge is free. So, as a Chime, first son was Oisa, but Oisa died before his father, who was a Nogi at that time, a Nogi, um, a Nogi, uh, Ihimi, or who was later to be known as Echi, uh, uh, a Chime or Chime. All right, so he died before his father. Uh, Ihimi died, but he had a son. He had a son, and that son, that Oisa had a son. That is the grandson of Ihimi, Nogi Ihimi, and his name was called Oheze. I might not get the pronunciation right. Uh -huh. Obviously, the names have started being Igbonized. Was called O Oheze or something like that. It has it has an H A E Z E O H A E Z E O H A Z E. So O H A Z E was not the grandson of Ezechima. His his father was Oisa. Oisa died before he ascended the throne of his own father while his father was still alive. So at the time Ezechima now died, Ezechima's first son has already died, which is Oisa. So there were now three candidates vying. To occupy the throne of Ezechima. Three candidates. The son of Ezechima, Prince Olibo. The grandson of Ezechima, Prince Oaeze. And the daughter of Ezechima, Princess Obio. These were not the three candidates vying for who to be the next Enogi of Iseluku. So, as it is, as it is customary, three of them took this historical trip to Benin. At the time they got to Benin, the Oba that was on the throne in Benin was Obae Sigi. The Oba that was in the throne was Obae Sigi. So, Obae Sigi listened to this analysis that I'm giving to you. The son of the late Enoge, the grandson of the late Enoge, and the daughter of the late Enoge, three of them were buying for. The first verdict was on the princess. The princess was ruled at because in Benin tradition, women are not allowed to sit on the throne. Women are not allowed to sit on the throne. Princess Obio was ruled out. Not remaining two candidates. 
Prince Oribo, which in its local is called Oligo. The son of the late Enoge and Prince Oaeze, the grandson of the late Enoge. So, according to what Obaisige made a statement that Prince Oribo is the direct line of his set and he called it Ovi Senahi. This is a direct, this is from the direct kion of his set. Prince Oaeze cannot lay claim in Benin. I get it makes sense when I was reading this story, when I was doing my research on this topic, it makes sense. I want to use my family as an example so that you people will understand why that decision, why the Benin Oba used that decision. That thing is applicable. It is, it is the applicability of it till date in Benin. When my grandfather died, my father is the first son of my grandfather. When he died, my father buried his, his father. That is, my father buried my grandfather. So when you do that in Benin, automatically the leadership, the head of that lineage is retained in the line of my father because my father buried his grandfather. Automatically, the head of my entire family now is, my, is now my eldest brother. Don't forget, my eldest brother, we have uncles. Because when we went to, when we were sharing our grandfather's property about a month ago, that is when I now get to understand some of this aspect of our traditions. We had senior uncles that are way older than my eldest brother. But because, according to them, but because my father, before my father died, he buried his grandfather, he, sorry, buried his own father, automatically the line, the head, the headship, of the entire family is not resting on my eldest brother. As if, if at the time my grandfather died, my father did not bury his, his own father, the headship of that family would have lived, would have dodged my own eldest brother and go to the, 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 the oldest surviving son of my grandfather. I don't know whether you understand. The line of headship would have moved to my uncle rather than to my own eldest brother. Uh, do we do we understand the gist? It was it has always been applicable in Benin history, but because Prince Oisa had died, he did not bury his father, so he had died even before his father. So he has he has lost that headship of the family and that headship now have moved to the oldest surviving son of Ezechima, which is now Prince Olibo. So that is the same judgment that Obaisige gave. So I'm able to relate with the judgment of Obaisige over 500 years ago because of what happened to my family, what happened, what I saw, the judgment that they took in the community, in my village, it was the same judgment. So Prince Ohaeze was ruled out because his father died before his grandfather. So his father did not bury his grandfather. He said it was his uncle that not buried his grandfather. So the headship had moved to Prince Olibo. So Baisige now pronounced Prince Olibo as the heir apparent to the throne. And Prince Olibo, as it was customary for every Enoge of for every Enoge of Iseluku must be retained in Benin and trained the art in Edote Itaime, the art of administration. It has always been until 1840. 1840. So every Obi officer must come to, to the palace of the Obar of Benin to be trained until it was stopped in 1840. But, uh, uh, but thank God for the Obar that we now have. 
the upper Abini reawaken it. The present Obi official who was trained in the palace of the upper Abini before he was crowned as the Obi official. So from 1840 till at the time Agbogidi was coronated, was in 2007, Unduka, the present Obi official. All right. They were no longer being trained in Benin. Instead, our buyer gave her a yo, yeah, my time, Bodo. But Obai Wai stopped it and said that what is customary that every OB before they are enthroned must come to the palace of the Oba Abini to be trained. The current OB of Iseluku came to the palace and spent a couple of months to be trained the tutelage of his ancestors on how the Enedoti time or not Negwati time. So, Prince Oaise was ruled at. Princess Obio was ruled at, and Prince Olibo was retained and was told to sit back and be trained before he can go back and sit on the throne of his ancestors. So Prince Oaise was aggrieved. Princess Obio was aggrieved. She was aggrieved, and when they led Benin to Iseluku, Prince Oaise took stone every every paraphernalia the other the Eben, and everything every paraphernalia of office and stole and fled on his way he founded places like onichao lona he had a song called anaga he founded um uh, onichao lona onichao on his way until he, he got to the bank of the river Niger. He wasn't satisfied. He has already stolen all the paraphernalia, the other and the other. So he crossed, he crossed the, uh, the river Niger, the bank of the river Niger, the other side, and I found a place that historically is called Onichomili, which is the Onicha at Anabra, present day Anabra State. He founded it, and he now became the first OB of Onicha, Prince o Oheze. He's the first OB of Onicha, the Onicha at Anambra. He named the locality of what he's founded. He, he, he named it after his father, whose name was called Oisa, which has been corrupted over the years to Onicha. Likewise, Princess Obio also left Iseluku and founded a place now which has become one of the clans of Eze Chima, the, nine, the ten clans of Eze Chima called Obio. Called Obio. So, that is how Um, that is how um, other clowns is because of the judgment of Obaisige that created the formation of the nine other clowns that broke out from Iseluku. Why did Iseluku still remain the head of all the Ezechiman? I was going to say a story just now that the first five rulers of Iseluku were addressed as the Enogi of Iseluku, but the sixth, which was Prince Olibo, was referred as Obi of Iseluku. That is because Obaisige has said Obi Se. He said is the grandfather. Um, he said is the grandfather. Uh, Enogi Ise, Ise should not be mistaken for Ise Nutekon. Ise should not be mistaken for Ise Nutekon. No, they are different personages. They are different people. The Enogi Ise, who is the father of Ihimi, is different from the Umada of Obao Zolua. Two different personages, so we shouldn't miss it. The Enogi uh, uh, the Enogi he said, who is the father of 
a no gay ihimi. Over the years, I was called ihime from ihime to chime, from chime to chima. All right. Now, Uuna gave birth to Prince Oligo. Oligona became a Onoge. But at the time the verdict was made, Obaishige had referred to Prince Oligo as Ovise, a direct clone officer, a Onoge officer. And because of that, the rulers, Prince Oligo, when he got to Iseliko, now adopted the word Ovi. Now, an Igbo man cannot pronounce most of the consonant sounds. They are not Igbos, but like I said, some for the Igbonization of them, it properly, even a lot of Edo people have problem pronouncing the V, the V, V, M sounds, the consonants in Benin. So the V has not been thrown away over the years, and it's not ascribed as the word OB. Instead of Ovi, he said Obi. The V has been removed over the years. So Iseluku was the first people that used the word Obi as their ruler, which extended to every other surrounding part of the present day Iseluku. And that is where the word Obi was adopted from. Obi is a corruption of the actual statement Ovi. The sun. Ovi means the sun. So, we have cleared it beyond, beyond every reasonable doubt. Who is a Chime is? Is a Chime never went to Benin. Was never an Aro Chuku native daughter. He never, he never came to Benin City. His father, he had a father, he had a mother. His father was a sir, who was a nogi. His mother was from Unkunzu, a village in the Olukumi clan of present day, still existing today. Unkunzu. That's where the mother was from. So the Eve was not saying that his achievements and Arochuku native daughter that fell from the sky, just like the Yoruba said about to do to her. When you want to know that the people, people are lying, they cannot be able to give the authenticity of the person. Where's the Chima? Where is he from? Doesn't he have a village? They cannot tell you because they don't know. Who is his father? They don't know. Who is his mother? They don't know. They don't know. So, I've been able to take us through bringing data data, facts, yes, of who this person is. So it's not Ihime. I've told you Ihime is not a Benin word. It's Ihime. It was Ihime that was corrupted by the Seluku people to Ihime. Over the years by the Igbo people to Chime and Chima. All right? So these are historical facts that was recorded now, by tomorrow morning, I will provide a transcript. I will provide an article of uh, the, the then in when Obaye, uh, sorry, Obaye the hour visited Iseluku. That was March 15, 1982. A speech was read. A, a speech was read. By the then OB Osimene, the third. OB Osimene, the third, read a speech dated March 15, 1982. Wherefore, they highlighted some of these facts in that speech. So, I'm going to write a very detailed article of a rejoinder by tomorrow, by this time around 7. The article should be everywhere. Share it. I'm going to explicitly analyze the dates. How Prince Ogun traveled to Iseliku. How he became a best friend to Prince Ihimi, who was later to be called Ezechima. And how all of these details were. How Ezechima became a no-gay. How, how his two children, 
and his grandson came to Benin the reign of Obaisigi. Wherefore they were not saying that David Chima was in Benin. He stayed for her. He stayed for some time, but they don't know how long he stayed. They don't know. They cannot tell you what era. Who was the upper at the time Eze Chima got to Benin? But they can only tell you that there was crisis in the palace. There was no crisis in the palace. And the, the only time Eze Chima never came to Benin, the only time it was Eze Chima's two children, Prince Oligo and Princess Obio and his grandson that came to Benin when they were having dispute on who to who to be enthroned next. It was a misinterpretation of error time that has culminated into the lies that they are speaking of. Now, um, I want to say another thing very important. This uh, <laughs> they'll say they'll say I hate or basically I hate or basically I hate God or basically, but this one. Is not an hate speech. I even heard I someone also sent an article the Igbos wrote saying that they are Godwin Obaseki is um Igbo people from Unsukwa. Okay, for the sake a lot of people have called me and said that are you sure Godwin Obaseki is not an Igbo man? He's from Unsukwa Unsukwa Yankiri. I told them that why am I like a guy any? Why am I like it? I bought up man on Igwa Toge. I know a lot of families that are Benin today that were not originally from Benin. But on the case of the Obasekis family, they are not just Benin. They are royalty. If you're buying him, someone should go and tell him that the history that they wrote on their website, Obaseki.com or Obaseki.org, is, is nonsense. They wrote that they are direct descendants of Obayahen Buddha. That's clear lie. Obaye Buddha already had one son. Obaye Buddha had one son and one daughter, Princess Isiwa, and um, and a Prince Odubo who later became Obaowa. Obaowa in Mabie. So how are they the direct sons of Obaye Buddha? They don't read. Oh, sorry, they read. But that history that they wrote is a complete lie that is different from history. They are direct descendant. Of Obarugbua, not Obayeng Buddha. Obarugbua, not Obayeng Buddha. I will, I will, I will analyze it now. I will analyze it now. Now, remember when I was analyzing an history. When I was an analyzing an history that consigned Prince Oise, Prince Oligo, and Princess Obio. I said when they got to Benin. An event happened. Prince Olibo was favored. The other two that was not favored, they were allowed to go. Because of that, when Prince o Oaise, who was not favored, got to Iseliku, he packed all the paraphernalia of Rula Shibiada, the Ebe, and every other artworks, artifacts or artworks that was in the palace of the uh, uh, that was in the palace of the Nogi at the time where they were called. At the Nogi official, look, he packed everything out and ran away. So when that news came to 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 the palace in Benin, they now devised another means that should, in case in future, their their rivalry or their discrepancies between two princes, when the palace favor one, the one that the palace favor will return after some amount of, uh, after being schooled and trained, will return to their kingdom. But the one that is not favored will never be allowed to return back. Instead, will be given a position in Benin and will be given houses, will be given money, will be given all types of things. All types of things that will make that person because of what Prince Oaise did to Prince Oligo by ransacking the palace of his grandfather. So that is what happened. Prince Obano was the younger brother of Obayhem Buddha. 
In short, Prince Obano was the second son of Obaro Boa. His first son was Prince Odiawato, who was later to become Obaihem Buddha. But his second son was Prince Obano. It is that Prince Obano that became the first OB of Unsukwa in Delta State. The first OB of Unsukwa, his name is Prince Obano. He is the second son of Obaro Boa. And because by what was already happening, his elder brother who became the Obahem Buddha now sent him as a duke to the Unsukwa dukedom. Alright? The line of this Prince Obanon has carried until the reign has always been there, but an event took place during the brain of Oba and Sonye. During the reign of Oba and Sonye, I've already established the first Obi of Unsukwa was a Benin prince, the second son of Obarokwa, the immediate younger brother of Obayahem Buddha, founded the Duke Donship of Unsukwa. So his generation down to the reign of Oba, Oba Ehen Sonye, there was a conflict of who becomes the next duke between two sons. Prince Oba uh, what's his name again? I think Obaibo. All right, Obaibo, Prince Obaibo, and Prince Oyo Abi. Uh, in one thing, I used to correct me very well. Oyo and uh, Abi, I think Oyo. Oh, oh, you know, there is Obedi Oyo. Uh -huh. It was between Prince Obaibo and Prince Oyo. Now, Prince Oyo was saying he's a legitimate head to the throne because the mother of Prince Obaibo was a concubine. Although Prince Obaibo was the first son of their father, but is era married yet. So Prince Toyo said that they married his mother. So Prince Obaibo uh, uh, um, his mother was never married, so he cannot be the Duke of Unsukwa. So that matter was not brought to the palace, and it was in the reign of Obayen Sonyen. So when they looked at it and said that, by Benin tradition, there's nothing like concubine. There's nothing like concubine. He's the first surviving son. So Prince Obaibo was favored to be the next Enoge of Unsukwa. So, but because of the event that happened about 250 years earlier during the reign of Obaisege, the Benin not being very knowledgeable, they did not, they did not allow Prince Oyo to return back to Unsukwa. So, Obayen Sonye not drafted Prince Oyo to be member of the Ibiwe Secret Society or Ibiwe Society. And that Oyo went to found a village at Isi District called Ike Newo Nedo, Ike, that Oyo founded a village called Ike, the, the full meaning of the village is called Ike Newo Nedo in present day Isi district. That Oyo eventually gave birth to a son that was later to be called Obede Oyo. So Oyo gave birth to Obede Oyo. And that Oyo was from Unsukwa, a direct descendant of Prince Obano, who was the son of Obaro Boa. That Obede Oyo now eventually became Ine Nibiwe. 
whose uh, during the, the reign of Obadolo, it was that Obede Oyo house that Prince Dubowa grew up with his best friend, which was now Awo, because Obede Oyo ni obie Awo, not your Baseki. Do you understand? So when people ask, are the upper circuits being Oh, come on. They are not just been They are not supposed to be greeting Labia. They are supposed to be greeting Lamogu. By my historical analysis, they are, are pure beings. They are not just being They are royalty. Knowing fully where that. You are from the royal house. A royal house where you go, eh, where you go vain. The royal house, eh, where you go vain. So, but ancestrally, from everything that I have explained, they are direct descendant of Prince Oroboa. So, ancestrally, if you obey him, if you obey him, because Oyo went to found. Ik, some of them are claiming Ik. No, it's not true. Went to find Ik. Finding Ik is different from you coming from Ik. The original, the patriarch of that family is Prince Obano, the first to be of Unsukwa. So, by connecting about eight hundred and fifty years of history. The upper circuits are from ancestrally from Ogbe. They later found AK, one of their sons along the way, which was Oyo, who gave birth to Ogbede Oyo. Ogbede Oyo now gave birth to Awo, not the upper circuit. All right. Uh, founded AK, Newo Nedo, which is at Isi district, at Uhumode. I have heard them when they say that they are ancestrally from Uhumode. That's not true. They are ancestrally from Mugwe. I have said mine. So, so, so for those, I've made it easy. For I heard they have a website. I read in their website some time ago where they said that they are from Obayan Buddha. That is a clear lie. It cannot be Obayan Buddha. Because at the time when I read this, now, who are all these people? If you don't know history, go and do findings. Obayan Buddha had one son, one daughter. The Ovie or Bao Mama Bia, Ovie no Kuma Bia, Princess Siwa. Princess Siwa was murdered by Iyasek Benede or Mabia. So, how are you now ancestrally connected to Oyen Buddha? If anybody tells you that they are ancestrally connected to by Oyen Buddha, is a lie. Because Oyen Buddha's line was cut off. It was cut off. They reconnected it back. To a Y. When it Ohuamabie, it was rotated. It was reconnected back to a Y. The Uzama chiefs, Uzama elders, reconnected it back to a Y. So they boycotted those Olua, Ozolua, uh, Esigi, uh, uh, Esigi Abi Uruguwa, and reconnected it back to a Y. They look for the next line. You know. Nori Le they reconnected it back to a Y. So a Buddha line was cut off. So that is a complex Benin history that I don't want to delve in. Otherwise, we'll be making analysis and I would have drawn the map on how the Uzama had reconnected it back to a Y. And the reason why they had to go back, 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 back to reconnect it. Ah, they be cousin so. You, when my boss I keep a monthly cousin. Hey, I now every day. I got one. I got one. So by 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 history, the Ogbedi Oyo are supposed to be greeting Lamugu, not Labi, is it? By history. By history, and I've just said it. Why history does not lie. History does not lie. So, ladies and gentlemen, I have done well. Uh, so, I have analyzed it. Uh, I have analyzed it. 
uh, by fact, not by by fact, not by speculation. I don't speculate. By tomorrow, you'll be seeing pages. I've I've read in the past uh, seventy-two hours. I've read about six Igbo books, Igbo historians. So, so I'm going to concise an article and extract it from these different authors so that I can give a rejoinder who is a chairman is so that not just the video I should also have an article that will back it up. I intend to publish the article on one of the national dailies so that we we'll have the people can make reference to it 15-20 years from now. So that let's shut that topic. Uh, is a chairman was a name that was um, corrupted from Ihimi Ihimi was mispronounced by the Seluku people as Ihime. Ihime, over the years, was Igbonized to Chime, then later Chima. So the Igbonization of the name does not make the name an Igbo name. All right. No, 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 no. By ASA title, but why would you choose an ASA title over your? Your original line. Maybe they, they didn't even, a lot of them didn't even know. Ah, well, cousin, which cousin? <laughs> if you're by my him, well, we, 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 we carry the torch light of the royal house and we defend it. So anybody, no matter carry the torch, torch light, who is not ready to defend the royal, eh, Born to whip picking at any. No, no, who is it? Who is it? Naka, I know them very well. No. No, they are not related to Eze Chima. Eze Chima never came to Orion district. All right, so. And whether they, they want to associate with him or not, but. Uh, is his cousin. You understand? I think uh, had 13 sons. He can tell you all the story. He knows the story of his family had about 13 sons. I was, I was the 11th son. Abi, 13 children. Abi, is it 13 children or 13 sons? But I know I was 11. So <laughs> they are cousins. Whether first cousin or second cousin or third cousin or fourth cousin or fifth cousin. Only my comment, cousin is cousin. It's outside your body, by the way. So he cannot deny himself. So, do I know? So anyway, if there are any question you want to ask, you can ask the question. Then make justice on it surrounding this topic. So that I can go and sleep. I can go and sleep. Everybody can go and sleep. So that we all can be happy. But next time, these people tell you, is a Chima, is an Igbo man. Asking some of the questions I asked. Who is this, is the Chima's father? Where is this is Chima from? Did he fall from the sky like Oduru fell from the sky in the other part, in the other neighbor? Did he also fall from the sky? He said he's from, if they said it's Aru Chuku native daughter, that he came to Benin. As a trader, which reign, which who was the upper at the time he got to Benin, they don't know why. I, I can all this factor. The only upper they try to connect it is Obaisigi, and I told you why they connect it to Obaisigi. That is the original history. I told you I gave facts of how these things are connected. So I gave facts. I gave, Uh -huh, 20 songs, but I will back. You know, Anna, you know, the family of her, you know, the issue of his family. <laughs> <In my> time, <laughs> they are cousins, they are cousins. <laughs> yeah, so, 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 if there are questions you ask, if there are no questions, we'll call it a day. No, 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 no. Um, Lab is not an hereditary title by, by law. Once if you have a family member, if any of your, if one of your fathers have become Iyase or Benin, automatically you start greeting Laviese. So all the 
people that great family uh, love is it are people at one point in time who one of their family members that was not the original greeting love is a, is a greeting enforced on anybody that becomes a yase all right so if they are produced yase before automatically that family now start greeting but that fact that was supposed to by that definition it was only our children that are supposed to be bearing that are supposed to be greeting love is it not to or your children by that but or your children are supposed to be greeting Lamogun by what this historical analysis that i have presented all right uh -huh. and that is the correction they cannot start to create Correct, if they want to. But your your family are not supposed to be greeting love is it. But they are not supposed to be greeting love is it. But rather, they are supposed to be greeting la mongo. Why the obaseki should be greeting by that definition? Should be greeting um, love is it. Uh, those I think Labo Labo, all those in Nogi of um, Ugoneki, all Ugoneki also be a Labo. But there are always history behind some of these greetings. But um, one prominent. Uh, so. This hereditary now, it's a greeting of the Obas of Benin. If you're back. So, uh, uh, tired, tired. So, anyway, so uh, I've been able to put this is a chima. Uh, I've been able to put this is a chima matter to rest. But um, I'm too tired. I will start the article tomorrow morning. Maybe by the evening, I should have been done. So, I'll put it out for people to have in their archive with fat, with dates, with newspaper publications dated back to I have a newspaper publication dated back to 1970 1970 was it 1974 because when they were doing Obakenzwa visited Iselukutwais twice during the time for Midwest, and when they were doing donation, there was um, a particular project they wanted to build at Iseluku. They were to raise 28,000 pounds. At that time of history, Oba Kendra donated 100, 100 pounds. No, not did that time. He donated 100 pounds to that project. They were to use 28,000 pounds for that project, but he donated 100 pounds. So I, I have all of those details. The, Publication where, because when a Prince Oribo was was living Benin, I, I, when the Benin have already discovered that his his nephew has stolen all the paraphernalia of office, he was not giving an other and a, and a pendant of Quinidia's mask, a pendant of Quinidia's mask. So they are the only vassals of Benin Kingdom, where they have a pendant of Queen India's mask given to them freely by the Oba. And that pendant, they continue to showcase it in great amazement till date. In great amazement till date. So, uh, in great amazement till date. Uh, 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 uh. See my belly. So let me thank all of those uh, people who has called me that they are coming for my wedding next month. When wedding next month, you know. Uh, so those who are still coming is August 23 and August 26. August 23 will go to Ilefe. Officially, we are going to His Royal Majesty which you people saw, we went to his royal majesty to officially notify him, to tell him, Nori Rung Shwima, Maya Ryoko. 
all we live for we are economic in Qatar. So His Royal Majesty pray for us. Chief uh, Esoma, the Royal Majesty mandated Chief Esoma to pray for us. Chief Esoma prayed for a very long time. Uh, so, so, uh, so, and we have a lot of people coming. Even our people from Ghana, our people from Ghana. Uh, they are sending representatives, a lot of royal majesties from River State, Delta State, they are sending royal majesties, they are sending representatives to, to be with us that, that day. So, as, as the bow has tried in uh, unifying with my uh, association, our association, the Agadagada Summit will be coming up later on this year. By tomorrow, we are going to start ruling publicity. So, the Agadagada will, will assemble no less than 60 royal majesties will come come up later this year. We are still working on the date, but publicity will start tomorrow. So I want when you see the publicity, let us share. So, but our people from Ga will be coming for the marriage. They were very happy. And uh, a lot of people are coming from Delta, River State, and all of our royal majesty as any representative for those who cannot come. Then, uh, so, you know, Bobby said, I will work. So, but I thank all of you who have reached out to me. Uh, that um, some said they would have loved to come, but because of one or two things that happened, they won't be able to. But like I told you earlier, like I said before, I like to have people around me than to send money. All right, I will call cow. I know money is good, but by nature, I would prefer um, this one wonderful people that uh, I've known for a while to be with me so that I can physically see some of these people I've been interacting with for years. Uh, so to also grace this very memorable time in my life. So uh why I was saying one talk by he said so uh I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Uh, uh Uh, you people start uh, don't sell your family you call yourself for so anyway I'll see you guys again Obama talk by yourself